Ever since Google I.O.'s conference last week, there have been so many threads claiming that BARD is now better than ChatGPT. Is that really true? And if it is, in what? Today we're testing BARD versus ChatGPT across a number of different areas from research to travel planning to see which actually outperforms. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Well, as I said in the intro, last week Google had its I.O. conference with some major upgrades for BARD and the LLM that underlies it. And since then we've had a ton of tweets and threads all claiming that BARD is somehow now better than ChatGPT, or at least on that trajectory. Now, part of what's making this interesting to do right now is that obviously BARD being connected to the internet has some serious advantages over ChatGPT, which is only trained on data up until 2021. However, OpenAI has said that they're now rolling out web browsing across all ChatGPT Plus users. We're all supposed to be able to have access to it this week. And so that is going to get one-to-one -one parity for that access to the internet, which could make a huge difference. So what are we going to test? Well, obviously this is totally subjective, but I decided to test five categories. The first is creative or storytelling. The second is coding for non-coders, basically asking these services to help me build a website when I don't know how to build it. Number three is business strategy or entrepreneurial design. Number four is travel planning. And number five is research. And for that research, I'm going to choose it in an area where I have some existing knowledge so I can actually grade it a little bit more confidently. Let's start with creative or storytelling, because I think that part of the magic for a lot of folks around ChatGPT is that it doesn't just seem like an encyclopedia talking to you. It actually feels like there's interest and verve and personality and joie de vie. So part of that comes out in its creativity. So I asked both Bard and ChatGPT, can you help me write a story? The story is about a nine-year-old boy and a dragon who happens to be his best friend. I'd like a story about them in the style of classic children's books by authors like Roald Dahl. Now, the simplest way to put what came out of Bard was that instead of writing a story about a nine-year-old boy, it gave me a story that sounds like it was written by a nine-year-old boy. Of course, I don't want to be overly critical. These are technologies that didn't exist just a couple years ago, but it's still not particularly good. It does, in fact, follow the prompt roughly. It has a character named Billy who's the nine-year-old boy, and it has a dragon that he meets. It doesn't really have much of a narrative through line, and it certainly doesn't have anything in the way of poetry, but it exists. ChatGPT, on the other hand, actually put something together that's pretty quality. The title of this one is The Adventures of Leo and Ember, The Unlikely Duo. Once upon a time in the small and quaint town of Dunhaven, there lived a nine-year-old boy named Leo. Leo wasn't like other children. He didn't have time for schoolyard games or bicycle races, for he had a most unusual best friend, a dragon named Ember. Now, one thing to note here is that technically my prompt did say that the dragon was already his best friend, and in Google Bard, it actually was an origin story that's neither here nor there, maybe quibbling, but ChatGPT seems to have gotten that little detail better. The story that it puts forward actually has some interesting details, like Ember was a miniature dragon the size of a plump Labrador. The other thing that ChatGPT does much better than Bard, which is something that I've seen before, is that it actually has a narrative arc. In this case, the pivotal moment is that Leo and Ember discover a luminescent flower blooming by the water's edge, known in dragon lore as the Moon Petal. Adventures transpire, and then, quote, in the end, Leo and Ember discover the greatest treasure of all, the value of true friendship. Comfortable points on this one to ChatGPT. Next up, we have coding for a non-coder. This is one of those use cases that people are most excited about. Not just that they can code things that they didn't have any business coding before, but that they can actually learn how to code alongside these tools. So I gave it a pretty simple request. Can you help me create a website that is like news.ycombinator.com, but for AI stories? Now, for those of you who don't know Hacker News, it's an extremely simple website that has been very popular for going on a decade and a half at this point. All you can do is upload an article, vote it up or down, and comment on it. And this creates a really interesting list of what stories people are most interested in, particularly from the developer and entrepreneurial community. So you can imagine why it would be valuable to have this type of thing, but customized for whatever particular niche you happen to be interested in. So here's what Bard came back with. Yes, I can help you create a website that is like Hacker News, but for AI stories, the steps involved are one, choose a domain name, two, install a content management system such as WordPress or Drupal, three, choose a theme or template, four, create pages and posts, five, add content to your pages and posts, six, customize the look and feel for your website, seven, promote your website. This, I have to say, was pretty disappointing. And of course, I think I could push Bard to get a lot more out of this. I'm not trying to hone it in and narrow it and focus it. But what I will note is that part of what is supposed to be better about Bard is that it is natively connected to the internet. So it should be able to go check out news.ycombinator.com. I gave it the URL, after all, and see what the website actually is. And if it did that, it would know that it's not an interface that you can just replicate with something like WordPress unless you found a theme that was exactly that theme. 
Compare this to ChatGPT, which says, let's assume you want a simple version, keeping the key features such as user registration, posting stories, voting, and commenting. Those are, in fact, as I just said, the key features. ChatGPT says here's a basic plan of actions. One, define your requirements. Two, choose your tech stack. Three, design the database. Four, develop your back end. Five, develop your front end. Six, testing. Seven, deploy. Eight, iterate. And for those of you who are listening, not watching, in each case, there is a set of steps underneath this that it's suggesting. For example, under the choose your tech stack, it has recommendations for front end, back end, and database. Under develop your back end, it gives the basic endpoints we'll need. So for user, register, login, logout, view profile, edit profile, as just an example. And so again, just as a learner who's trying to figure out what to do next, this is a much more comprehensive, clearer picture of what I actually have to do that would give me a better jumping off point to go in from there. So again, point in ChatGPT's favor. Next up, business strategy or entrepreneurial design. This is the type of thing that's been getting a lot more headlines, I think, and video views than it is actually useful in the real world. But because of its prevalence, I decided it was a good fit as well. So I said, I want to create an e-commerce business using generative AI. Imagine you're a great entrepreneur and have $1,000 to start the business. What business would you start and how would you do it? Bard comes back and says, I would start a business that creates custom designed clothing and accessories. I would use generative AI to create a variety of designs that are unique and stylish, and I would sell them online through my own website. I would also use generative AI to help me with marketing and advertising so that I could reach a wider audience and generate more sales. It says here are the steps I would take to start my business. Research and identify a target audience, develop a business plan, choose a platform for my e-commerce store, design and develop my website, market and advertise my business, fulfill orders and provide customer service. ChatGPT's response on this one looks quite similar. They say, one possible idea could be a personalized product design business where the AI generates unique designs based on customer preferences. Let's break this idea down into actionable steps. Business concept. The business could focus on creating personalized digital assets like posters, logos, apparel designs, and more. The generative AI would use customers' inputs, e.g. color preferences, style themes, to create unique designs. Then it says steps to start, and this is very similar to what we saw from BARD. One area where it was perhaps slightly ahead of BARD in terms of the specificity was its budget allocation. With that $1,000, it suggests 300 to 500 for AI model development, which is a little bit more complex than is probably necessary, $29 a month for website development. It's suggesting print-on-demand services, so there shouldn't be upfront costs for that, and it says $300 for marketing for running a few targeted ads. Now, in this one, I was pretty inclined to give Bard and ChatGPT a tie, and I saw a few other people who had done something similar. Florian Kamiade, for example, did a Twitter thread about how he worked with Bard to figure out how to start a business that could bring up to $15,000 a month in revenue. And one of the things that he does that I think is very important if you were actually trying to do this is work with the AI to hone it in and focus it. He says Bard is very powerful in generating ideas, but this time we'll challenge him on something more specific. When the results are too vague, he challenges it to go a little bit more niche. He asks for an assessment of the competition and even does a little bit of strategy design, asking for a buyer awareness matrix. I think this is a good example of how you would actually advance this ball down the field if you wanted to use Bard to build a business. And the key here is continued specialization and refinement. Min Choi also wrote that one of the things that makes Bard better potentially than ChatGPT around this sort of business ideation is that because it has access to the internet, it can leverage the latest information. He says, while ChatGPT can generate good ideas, it tends to be verbose and occasionally out of touch. Now again, ChatGPT with browse potentially changes this dynamic, but for now, maybe there's a slight edge for Bard. Next, we go to the travel or personal assistant use case. The prompt is, I have three nights and two days in Paris with my wife at the end of June. We don't like lines. We have a medium to high budget. We like La Marais and Montmartre, sorry about the pronunciation, best, but like all of the city. Love classic cuisine and are fans of the city's literary and artistic past. Can you create a recommended itinerary? Bard's answer is, in a word, generic. Day one, it says, start your day with a leisurely breakfast at a charming cafe in La Marais. Yeah, but which one? Then it does give a specific museum suggestion and a specific afternoon attraction. But in the evening, again, it says enjoy a romantic dinner at a Michelin-starred restaurant in Montmartre. But which one? Meanwhile, ChatGPT just knocked this one out of the park. Day one, morning, begin your day with breakfast at one of the charming cafes in the La Marais neighborhood. I recommend Carette, known for its excellent pastries and coffee. Basically, it goes through and gives all that sort of detail over and over. For lunch, try Chez Genou. It's a Provencal bistro that serves classic French dishes and has a charming terrace. ChatGPT also really nailed the literary history part of the prompt. Day three, it suggests start your day with breakfast at Le Procope in the Latin Quarter. It's the oldest cafe in Paris and was frequented by Voltaire, Rousseau, and other literary figures. Visit the Shakespeare and Company bookstore, a historic gathering place for writers like Hemingway and Fitzgerald. 
Now, neither of these are super unknown or anything like that, but they were both features of the last trip that we took to Paris, which was specifically designed to have these literary touch points. Anyways, it is entirely possible to me that Bard could end up producing similar results if I use more specific prompts, but the ChatGPT got a lot closer right out of the gate. The final area I wanted to test was research, and as I said, I wanted to do something where I had good information, so I actually had the basis to know which one was performing better. I asked both Bard and ChatGPT about the Nigeria Biafra Civil War in the late 60s and early 1970s, which is what I happened to write my undergraduate history thesis on. I asked what were the main causes of the conflict, how did it come to an end, and how was the international community involved? What is the conflict remembered for? What other resources would you point to to learn more? Now, the biggest thing for you guys to note for the sake of this video is that this is basically the conflict where we got that famous famous idea of having to finish your food because there are kids starving in Africa. The Biafran War was really the first place that international humanitarian aid was born as we know it. It was the first time that there were televised images of starvation, and there was mass humanitarian involvement in a way that simply hadn't been the case for previous conflicts. Google Bard missed a lot of that. It did recognize that it was remembered for the use of starvation as a weapon and the international outcry being condemned by the international community, but it didn't really pick up on how integral it was to the development of the humanitarian industry. It was also a little reductive in terms of causes, but hey, this is a summary. I wasn't expecting much more than that. ChatGPT just did a much better job. It pointed to a number of specific incidents rather than just sort of vaguely articulated grievances, it did a better job explaining how the war came to its end through a blockade that led to starvation, and it nailed that those images of starvation were one of the most important legacies of the conflict. ChatGPT writes, this helps spur the development of international humanitarian law and the principle of responsibility to protect. So summing up on four out of my five categories, creative and storytelling, coding for non-coders, travel planning and research, ChatGPT was just very clearly ahead of BARD. On business strategy, they were roughly equivalent, although I'm willing to give that one to BARD based on what other people had said. Now, I looked for a couple of other comparisons as well to see, one, if people were having similar results to me, and two, whether there were categories that I had missed. Brian Kent on the Apricot blog did a similar comparison and found notably that ChatGPT did a better job of summarizing long-form content and ChatGPT did a better job of writing a Python function. And then Tech.co did a long comparison, which I'll link to, that had self-awareness, ethical reasons, small talk and conversation skills, retrieving facts, generating formulas, creative flair, idea generation, linear planning, ability to summarize small extracts, ability to summarize broad topics, ability to simplify text, and ability to paraphrase text. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there were six that they declared Bard the winner, five that they declared ChatGPT the winner, and two that they declared were a tie, so really close overall, but the edge goes to Bard in their accounting if you weighted these all equally. Now, there are other feature reasons why you might want to use something like BARD over ChatGPT. For example, some have pointed out that BARD can process images as prompts, which could be a useful tool. And I think more than anything else, the thing that BARD has going for it is that it's integrated with the Google suite of tools. You can export BARD answers directly into Gmail or directly into Google Docs, and you can extend prompts with search by pressing Google it. So where I want to close it is back with Nate Chan, whose tweet kicked off this whole conversation. And I think he makes a really salient point in his second tweet. He writes, The arguments that GPT-4 is better than BARD miss the point that these LLMs will eventually converge to quote-unquote good enough at everything LLMs can do. If BARD came first and devs were building on its API first and the prompt community was exploring BARD first, considering all of Google's inevitable BARD integrations into it, all of its ubiquitous services, there would have been little to no chance of the entire community would have switched to a little-known startup named OpenAI to use a slightly better LLM. Google missed the first mover boat, but they still have every opportunity to retake the lead. That might be true, but OpenAI has a ton of energy around it, and for now, ChatGPT4 is absolutely, no doubt about it, better than BARD. How long that will last is another question. That's it for the AI Breakdown. Hope this was helpful. Let me know what you found. Are there areas where Bard clearly beats ChatGPT? I'm super interested to know. Hit me up in the comments. And if you're enjoying the AI Breakdown, please like, subscribe, and share it. Until next time, guys. Peace.